very good morning to all of you. Uh, those of you joining us on online service this morning from your home. And uh, let's prepare our hearts this morning as we come uh, this morning service as we read the scriptures from taken from Romans 5, verse 8 and 9. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we are now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Father, we want to thank you this morning we can come to worship you. We can come to worship you because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. Through his precious blood. They have been warmed, that our sins are being cleansed. And we can come to worship you this morning. We can come to glorify your name this morning. And Father, we want to bless you. We want to lift up our voices. Regardless of what situation we may be in today. Lord, we just choose to bless you. We choose to worship you. Just like the psalmist say, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that redeems me. Bless his holy name. Father, we want to commit this time to you in Jesus' mighty name. And all the peoples say, Amen. Pass this time to Sister Sophia to lead us in the time of worship. Good morning, church. Um, wherever you are, in your home, um, your family members, I encourage all of us to just rise to our feet as we worship uh, what is saying.
Let's prepare our hearts this morning to partake the Lord's Supper together. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you this morning that we can come once again to you. Come to the Lord's table to partake the Lord's Supper. We are reminded of what Jesus has done for us on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. I thank you for his life. I thank you for what he has done for us. His body was broken for us. His blood was shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. To his precious blood, all our sins have been forgiven. Lord, when we put our faith in Jesus, we can come once more to come to enter into this relationship with the Almighty God. We can come through the Holy of Holies, communion with God, not because of our good works, but because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. And this morning as we come and to partake of the Lord's Supper, we are reminded of what He has done for us. And we are forever grateful for the finished work of the cross of Calvary. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, the Apostle Paul says this word, but I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake the bread together. The same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you will claim the Lord's death. Here he comes. Let's drink together. Let's pray. You are physically unwell in your body. Just lay your hand on yourself. And right now we just pray. Father, we want to thank you this morning that we want to thank you that we have this new covenant through your son Jesus Christ. In this new covenant, Lord, as a child of God, Lord, we thank you that we can appropriate Lord for the divine healing, divine power from God, from God. We ask right now in the name of Jesus for those who are really physically unwell, right where they are at home. You speak healing to come upon their body in Jesus' name. Be healed of every sicknesses and diseases from your body in Jesus' name. 
Lord, those who are mentally unwell in the name of Jesus because of this situation that we are living in. We are oppressed. We are depressed. We are confused. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray for clarity of mind to come upon all of us right now in Jesus' name. We pray, Father, for the body, soul, and spirit to be made whole in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the people say, Amen. Church, welcome to our FCT online service. We are so glad that you are able to join us today via Facebook. So if you are happy to be here, uh, can you put down in the chat, God is good, so we can see and interact with each other virtually. So uh, as we begin our service this morning, we have a few announcements. First up, we would like to thank for your continuous support to us through your tithes and offering and that because of your giving we are able to continue to have online services for you every week continue to do God's work so we just want to thank you from our hearts and we just want to pray over our tithes and offering before that just a reminder if you have uh, if you want to tithe to us right now we will encourage you to tithe via online banking. Our account number is on the screen. Maybank FCT Berhad 5122-3151-3600. Yes, so we encourage you to give through online giving at this time. Yes, so right now let us pray for the tithes and offering. Father, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for providing for us. That yes, Lord, we want to honor you with our life, Lord, we want to honor you with our giving, oh Lord Jesus. And I just want to pray for those who have given generously, given faithfully unto us. I just pray that you bless them bountifully, you bless them, Lord, in their health, you bless their family, and you give them wisdom, oh Lord, and protection as we are facing this pandemic. And Lord Jesus, I just want to pray that you keep us in good health, good strength. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Secondly, we are having a prayer portal online every Tuesday. So we'll be having it on the 3rd of November via Zoom. So the meeting ID and the passcode is on the screen, but do not worry. Uh, these details will be passed to your cell group leaders and they will send it to you. So we do encourage you to join to join us for a time of prayer together because we can't pray together physically we encourage you to pray with us virtually together amen there is power with corporate prayer and we do encourage you to join with that being said we would like to invite our speaker for today pastor joshua to come and give us the word this morning let us welcome pastor joshua give you a round of applause for your home amen Very good morning once again. Thank you for joining us this morning in our online service. Uh, trust that all of you are well in the Lord. Let us continue to stand the gap and uh, to pray for our nation over this COVID-19 situation uh, in our nation as we know that this third wave has uh, become worsened for the past one month. But we thank God that the situation is getting better. But let us continue to pray and ask God to uh, divine intervention to flatten the curve once more. And so that 
in the near future, probably in another couple of weeks that we are able to uh, come back to worship God on site together with the Lord. Why don't we just take this time right where you are in your home and join with me to pray and, uh, and ask God for His divine intervention. Father, we want to thank you for this morning. And Lord, we look to you for your divine intervention in the name of Jesus over the situation over Malaysia so that, Lord, the COVID-19 pandemic will be under control, that the curve will be flattened, and so that, Lord, that we are able to come back and to worship on site. And Father, we ask of you for your protection upon all the frontliners, the doctors, the nurses, the police force, and the, 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 uh, in the, during this uh, pandemic, Lord, we just pray that God will watch over them, protect them, and grant them good health and strength, even at this time, at this moment, Lord, so they continue the battle this pandemic, Lord. And Father, we want to thank you, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the people say, Amen. Hallelujah. And this morning, I want to talk about uh, my uh, entitled my message, Unshakable Faith. I think this is a very important uh, subject especially we are facing uh, in this challenging time and we are now uh, close to 10 months since the pandemic started uh, in January and uh, there are many uh, waves, in fact we are facing the third wave and I just watched the news yesterday in Europe, in fact uh, they are have, having a second lockdown, in fact in Spain uh, the people are not so uh, as uh, disciplined as we are in Malaysia, we are quite uh, obedient to the SOB, but in Spain uh, they don't want lockdown, and so they go to the street and they protest. And uh, there was a riot, and uh, there's a state of emergency in, in in Spain. So the situation wasn't very good at that time. And I, I during this time, this woman over this situation. So, and and uh, I want to talk about this morning as unshakable faith. What does it take? To shake your faith. What does it take to shake your faith? In uh, Apostle Peter, in uh, Matthew chapter 14, uh, verse 22 to 33, we read an account that uh, the, the disciple was on the boat, Jesus was uh, praying and all at the land. And uh, the Bible tells us that he said in, in about the fourth watch, probably about three to six o'clock in the morning, and uh, he walked towards the disciple uh, at the lake. And the disciple cried out and said, They were terrified as a ghost, they said, and cried in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, do not be afraid. And uh, Peter said, Lord, if this is you, tell me to come to you on the water. So Peter jumped up on the, the boat and uh, started to walk on water and truly he was walking on water and it was a miracle and then the disciple walked on the water and at the command of Jesus but the Bible tells us that when he saw the wind he was afraid and began to sink his faith was shaken when he saw the wind and he was uh, started to sink and Jesus rescued him there was in another account, and Peter was uh, when Peter was when Jesus was arrested. When Jesus was arrested by the the, the Roman soldiers together with the the, the priests who came, and uh, uh, the Bible tells us that uh, Judas. With, with him was a large crowd armed with sword and club and sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people and they seized Jesus and arrested him and Peter was following at a distance right up to the courtyard at the high of the high priest he entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome he wanted to know what is the outcome of Jesus' trial and uh, somebody identified him and, uh, and Peter began to deny him not just one was it twice or three times? Peter's faith was shaken. How about us? What does it take to shake our faith? What causes, 
what will shake our faith in this time, in this challenging time that we are living in. Number one is bad health. When we heard about from the doctor. Bad news about our health. And uh, we have bad news about our finances. Some of us lost jobs. And we have disappointment that our plan didn't work out as we thought it would be uh, because of this COVID pandemic, uh, 19 pandemic, it caused us our plan uh, ups, uh, uh, this, what we call uh, change our plan and situation and persecution can shake our faith for long suffering some of, us be, some of us may be suffering and, uh, and saying, God, oh, when, when will this thing will come to an end? And we are going through this negative circumstances and one after another, and uh, it can shake our faith today. And I want to look, to, I want to, we want to look to the, the Bible today. We want to look at one person by the name of the life, uh, by the name of Daniel, and look from his life and how his life as an encouragement to, to us and how he remains steadfast in his faith to God. Now, let me just give you a background of the life of Daniel at this moment before we look into the Daniel chapter 5, verse 30 onwards. Now, as you recall, Daniel was one of the, those uh, Hebrews who had been taken into uh, Babylon when Nebuchadnezzar, the king, Babylonian king, invaded Jerusalem somewhere in 605 BC. And, uh, and uh, they destroyed the city, they burned the wall, and the gates, and all three occasions, 605 BC, 597, and 586. And they deported the top quality people to Babylon to use them, to, to teach them, to grow them in their culture, in the Babylonian culture, and ways, and their language. And hopefully they want to think of, to make them, to make them, uh, uh, become a Babylonian in their thinking, in the, in the way they behave, in their culture. And uh, some of these people, uh, men, young men, were called Daniel and Satrach, Mishra, and Abednego that we, we read about in the, in the book of Daniel. But in, in, this, in, the chapter, in Daniel chapter 6, we found that Daniel's faith was tested. And uh, let's read from Daniel chapter 5, verse 30 and 31 now. Let's read together from where you are at home. Uh, let's read out loudly. Uh, let us read out loudly. Then that very night, Belshazzar, the Babylonian king, was killed. And Darius the Medes took over the kingdom at the age of 62. Darius the Medes decided to divide the kingdom into 120 provinces, and he appointed a high officers to rule over each province. Daniel chapter 6, verse 2 to 4. The king also chose Daniel and two others as administrator to supervise the high officers and protect the king's interests. Daniel soon proved himself more capable than all the other administrators and high officers. Because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. Then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs, but they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn. He was faithful and always responsible and completely trustworthy. The rest of his colleagues and these people are jealous about his position. So they find ways to try to set a plot to come against Daniel so that they want, they want to get, it, get, uh, get rid of him from, from the kingdom of Babylonia. And so in Daniel chapter 6, verse 7 to 8, we read about how they set the plot to come against Daniel. Daniel 6, verse 7 to 8, it says that we are all in agreement with administrators, officers, high officers, advisors, the governor, that the king should make a law that will strictly enforce, give orders that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone 
divine or human except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into dens of lions. And now, your majesty, issue and sign this law so it cannot be changed. An officer's law of the Medes and the Persian that cannot be revoked. So they found, they set a plot. They know that they couldn't find ways to accuse him, to set, uh, 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 the, the accused Daniel. But so they find a law that will try to challenge, uh, come against Daniel because they knew Daniel was a worshiper of God. Amen. So they they asked the king to sign it. And so they thought all of this time they were going to nail him, nail Daniel. But look at the Bible and let's look at verse. 10. And this is what it says. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 10 says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home, and in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knee three times a day and prayed and give thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. Daniel's faith was not shaken. He was not shaken by the decree that was signed. He was not shaken that your property will be thrown in the lion's den if he disobey the commandment, the, the, the law that was set. But he continued seeking the face of God. What happened? And finally, because he refused to obey the decree, the Bible tells us that he was thrown into the lion's den. The Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 6, verse 16, the king, now the king went to this palace and spent the night fasting, and no musician were brought before him. And also his sleep went from him. Then the king rose very early in the morning went in haste to the dens of lion. When he came to the, to the dens, he cried with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him, and he commanded that they should take Daniel out of the dance. So Daniel was taken out of the dance, and no injury whatever was found on him, because he delivered in his God. He believed in his God. And the verse 24 in Daniel chapter 6, he says, Then the king gave the command, they brought those men who were accused Daniel, and they cast them into the dance of lion. Then the children and their wife, and all those accusers, enemy of Daniel, were all thrown into the lion of dens instead. Daniel, the one they have a plot, want to come against Daniel, but they themselves ended in the lion's den and eaten by lion. You now, Daniel was truly an example of a person who was not shaken by the situation that. It was in. And I pray that all of us will not be shaken during this time. Amen. Now let's look at what do you mean, what do we mean, unshakable faith? He said, We are talking about the quality of faith that is not intimidated by difficulties and hardship and threat. It is not moved by, it is firm, fixed steadfast and it is not, does not change because a first wind blow one way or the other. What does it mean? It means that no matter what circumstances we may be in, just like Daniel. But he was in a tight spot. He knows his life is in danger. But his faith was remains steadfast. His, his faith was not shaken at all. And he remained faithful to his God. Hallelujah. Amen. In Daniel, in the book of Daniel, you read and you read an account a similar situation to his three friends, Abednego, Meshach, and Sadrach. In Daniel chapter 
Jonah chapter 3, verse 1 to 18. And uh, we read an account that Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, made a gold statue, you know, 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide, and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And, and, and anyone who refused to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace, quite similar to the situation of Daniel. Okay? And uh, the Bible tells us that uh, these three Hebrew refused to obey they, because they were Jewish. They worshipped the God Jehovah. Amen? And verse 11, Daniel chapter 3, he said, The decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into the blazing furnace. But there are some Jews, Satra, Meshach, and Ebony, go home. You have put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you. They refuse to serve your God and do not worship the gold statue you have set up. Nebuchadnezzar flew into rage and ordered Satrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, It is true, Satrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my God to worship the ghost that you have set up. I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship to the statue I make when you hear the sound of the musical instrument. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. In fact, the king never can ever want to give them a chance to bow unto this statue. But look at the response from these three Hebrew. Abednego, Sajak, Abishad, Abednego replied, Oh, never can I stop. In verse 16, he said, Oh, never can I stop. We do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your God or worship the gold statue you have set up. A lot of Christians stop at the first First part, we, you know, God is able to save us. God is able to deliver us. But what about if? What about if? It's three Hebrew guys, you know, thrown into the furnace fire and God burn, never come out. But the Bible tells us that they say in the verse, Verse 18, he said, even if it doesn't, we want to make clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your God or worship the ghost that they will you accept. That means that even God will not deliver them from this furnace fire, they will still remain faithful to their God. Wow. I was just thinking, how about us? Will we still remain faithful to God? Even God did answer our prayer. But we be still faithful to God even, even God didn't answer according to what you want. That is the kind of faith we need to have. Unshakable faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look on. Let's look for Well, what does what it does not mean? What an unshakable faith does what does what it does not mean? Okay? Let's look at this word. Okay, we are not talking about a faith that will preserve me, protect me from all types of difficulties. Unshakable faith does not guarantee me that I will not go through difficulties and hardship, trials and persecution. Free with me. Unshakable faith does not guarantee me that I will not go through difficulty, hardship and trials and persecution. Amen. It doesn't guarantee us. We may go through, some of us may be asking, say, oh, come, I know I'm going through so many trials and, and, and troubles in my life. You know? No. If you are a child of God, as, as the Bible says in John 16, 33, that in this world there will be great tribulation. We will face, we will face all kinds of challenges. 
Unshakable faith does not mean I will lose my life and living in obedience to God. Wow. What does it mean? It means that even in obedience to God that I may lose my life, that I will still remain faithful to this God. You be faithful to God. Even your life is in danger. We, we look at in the life in the New Testament, the lives of the apostles, the disciples, many of them lost their lives. But they remain faithful to God. Only 12, 12 apostles, only one, only one who is alive, and uh, that is Apostle John. Uh, and uh, he's able to live to his old age. And that is why we have the book of Revelation. And all the rest all being martyred. 11 of them, all of them, the life was taken. Hallelujah. But they will still remain faithful to God. I believe that God wants us to have an unshakable faith in this challenging time. I was just wondering, I was just pondering this now about when we're worshiping God. I say, God, I say, how, we will, how many of us will still remain and keep our faith? after the pandemic is over. It may be another one more year. We do not know. We will be. Some of our faith are already shaken now because we can't even come to church to worship God together. We can only go, you know, to go, we can only uh, broadcast through live stream today. And a lot of our life are uh, being affected, distract, uh, what called, affect us the way they you know, so many things have changed. You know, and uh, will we will we still remain faithful to God during this time? Mm-hmm. I believe this is the real test of life and test of faith during this critical time that we're living in. I believe that this COVID nineteen pandemic comes, uh, you know, uh, uh, as a test to all of us. Really, it, it tests our faith. It tests to the basic core of our belief do we believe in God is Jesus still your Lord is Jesus still your Savior is Jesus is still the masters of your life many people lost job and I, I just heard that even the theater suspended for a time one starting today imagine never in history I was, when I was young I know I love I love movie you know, from young, you know, I, this is the first time in history, in my life, the whole theater industry had to completely shut down for an entire month until further notice. Never, never in history. And some of the travel industry was also affected badly. And instead of travel overseas now, they travel virtually. And I was I watched the news, and uh, as, as uh, the uh, uh, the uh, Thailand uh, airline, Singapore airline, also Japan airline, they they have uh, what you call a restaurant, you know, and uh, set up just like a plane. You sit in there, you have dinner there, you are served by the stewardess, and uh, you know the, the captain, the car, and take picture with you, and all this thing, you know. And then in fact, in Japan, they go to a room and uh, set up just like a plane. Sitting down there, and let's go to Paris, but not, not going there physically, but going virtually. So they give you a gadget, a virtual gadget, and then you go to Paris. Things have changed so much. Let's move on. How do you, how do you, and I know that you have unshakable faith. How do you, and I know that you have unshakable faith. I only know when my faith is unshakable is when God allowed enough storms, enough heartache, enough burdens, enough persecution, enough beatings. No matter what, I am unshaken in my relationship with God. What does it mean? It means that whatever circumstances we may be in that we are going through, one after another, just like Daniel, one after another. 
coming against him. But yet he will still remain faithful. He will still remain unshaken in his relationship with his Almighty God. How is this unshakable faith established and developed? Let's look at the Bible quickly and look at the life of Daniel. And uh, let's learn from him. Number one, Daniel learned to trust God from a young age. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. I want you to look at the scripture once again. It says, Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home, and in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knee three times a day, and he prayed and gave thanks before his God. And read this. As was his custom since early days. Now, what does it mean? That means Daniel has learned to trust God from a young age. Amen? When, when Daniel was uh, deported to Babylon, he was, was a young teenager, probably about 15 or 16 years old. Now, in the Jewish community, you need to understand in the Jewish community, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1 to 9, and you have time to go back and just read it. And, and Moses gave a commandment, and a good, go, Moses began to relate the commandment of instruction from God to the Israelites before they enter into the promised land. And this is what they need to do. In say, in verse 3, listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey, and all will go well with you. You will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey. Just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you, listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength, and you must commit yourself wholeheartedly to this command that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home, when you are on the road, when you are going to bed, when you are getting up, tie them to their hands, to your hands, and wear them on their forehead as a reminder. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And this is a young boy, and uh, you will see there is uh, something uh, squirting on his head. <laughs> that, is, that is what you mean. The tie there is a scripture reminding them of the word of God. From young they are trained to love God's word. From young they were trained to worship God. They are disciplined from young. And so Daniel did trust God in Babylonian. His faith in God, his trust in God was right way before when he was a child. Taught by his father and his parents, his mother. And he has cultivated this discipline to seek God three times a day. So when, when he faces challenges that he was facing in Babylon, so the first thing was, he go and seek God. Amen? Can you see that? Okay? Now, if you, if you want to have a shaken faith, you have to start now. You need to continue to have a consistent lifestyle of seeking the faith of God. Amen. Not not just when this time is good, you know, they just pick up the Bible and read the Word of God and see the Lord. It has to be a systematic, consistently, and seeking the face of God. And that is how you develop a relationship with God. So when you face challenges in life, when you face obstacles in life, and the first thing that you will do, you will seek the face of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Secondly, Daniel learned to trust God by listening to the prophecies of Jeremiah the prophet. This is a very interesting point. And, uh, you know, we need to understand, during that time, uh, uh, that, uh, Jeremiah was the prophet that God sent to the kingdom of Judah, which is uh, southern uh, Israel. Okay? And, uh, and God sent prophet Jeremiah, he was probably uh, he was alive during the time about 40 years during the time he was uh, uh, prophesying the word of God to this, uh, the people of Judah. Because of their rebellion against God, because of their uh, 
uh, disobedient. So God sent prophet Jeremiah to warn them of the coming judgment that God will send the Babylonian to come and invade Jerusalem and he will take them to be captive into Babylon. And you know what they do? The people refuse to listen and put them into prison, put him into prison. <laughs> and then release him and put him back into prison. They refuse to, to take heed of the warning. May we take heed the warning of the word of God. Amen. May we take heed even in this COVID-19 pandemic as a sign of the end time when Jesus is to come. Amen. And so he listened to the prophetic word, the prophecy, and he learned to trust God. And even when he was in Babylon, and uh, Prophet Jeremiah will write those prophetic words to deliver to the people in Babylon, uh, and were captive in Babylon. So Daniel had learned to trust God the prophetic word of God, and he see how God's word, how God's prophetic word came into fulfillment in his lifetime. Well, now what does it mean to us? It means he learned to trust God with his word. We need to trust God, not just the prophetic word itself, but also the word of God that, that God has spoken in the Bible. Amen. Now, if God say that He is going to come back, believe me that He is going to come back. Hallelujah. Okay. So, if He said that you're going to be an earthquake, and, uh, and just a few days ago, two days ago, and in Turkey area, and uh, and there was an earthquake, about seven point something earthquake just happened in Turkey. So, when God said that this is the beginning of sorrow, but it means that He will. Take heed the word of God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Lord. And thirdly, Daniel learned to trust God and walk in obedience. Hallelujah. He had learned to trust God. And he, he learned to trust God and he put his faith in God and he also walked in obedience. That is why he will not bow down to the pressure. Of the accuser that he cannot pray to his God. He will not bow down. And even though his life was in danger, he will he will not bow down because he will walk in obedience to what God's word has said to him. And we need to learn to walk in obedience. Hallelujah. Trusting God and obedience come together. Faith and obedience come together. They are all linked together. They are like twin brothers. You cannot separate the two. Daniel trusts God and obey God. And each time, no matter what's the outcome, his commitment is to be obedient to God. I pray that you and I will be obedient to God in whatever situation we may be in. This is why many Christians go to church, listen to sermons again and again, years and years after years, they do not grow in their spiritual life. They want to trust God, they want to learn about God, but they do not want to be obedient to God. Sometimes to obey God costs us, sometimes it costs our lives. Amen. We need to walk in obedience to God. If you trust God, then we need to walk in obedience to Him. It may, it may trust us. It may cost us. It may cost our lives. We will still remain faithful to Him. Hallelujah. In closing, let us develop an unshakable faith in this challenging time. That we are living in. I put this picture as a close, and uh, I was amazed by this tree. This tree is probably a very tall tree, and uh, probably a couple, uh, I think, more than 100, more than 100 feet, more than that. And as you know, for a tree to grow so tall, the root must be deep, very deep, under the ground. Now, surprisingly, there is a tree in Africa, in South Africa, 
Okay? And uh, it says that it measures almost 400 feet deep. I mean, it's the root for 400 feet deep under the ground. So when, when, when the wind blow, when there has strong wind blow, and you know, do you know that this tree will not be uh, torn down or will be blown away? No, it will remain solid, unshakable because the root was deep. Same thing with us. If you want your faith to be unshakable, then you need to grow deep in your heart. And during this time, during this challenging time that we are living here, we must grow deep in your heart. We must continue to seek His face. We must continue to walk in obedience to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us close in prayer. Father, we want to thank you this morning. We thank you, Father, for your word to us. That we need to have an unshakable faith in this trying time that we're living in. Lord, when we go through trials, when we go through testing, when we go through storm, when we do go through difficulties, Lord. Lord, may our faith not be shaken. May our faith remain steadfast. May our faith remain firm, just like Daniel and his three Hebrew friends. They were not shaken. They remained steadfast. They remain unshaken. Because, Lord, they have a relationship with you. And their life was deeply rooted in God. And we pray for each one of us here today. Right where we are. Lord. I pray for each one of us, Lord. If our faith are shaken this morning, I pray, God, that you begin to work a deep work in our lives. They help us, Lord, begin to cause us to love to come into the presence and come into prayer and come into the Word of God and come, Lord, to draw grace and strength from you, Lord, and you alone and from your Word to strengthen us and establish us, Lord. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, for those who are going through or suffering right now in our lives, they were facing some sicknesses they're going through. We pray that God they will remain steadfast in your faith towards you. We will hold on to you and trust in you. We'll see them through in Jesus' name. No matter what, Lord, let our relationship with God not be shaken. And we will still remain faithful to you, your Almighty God. We give you praise and you glory. In Jesus' mighty name. And all the people say, Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. And uh, we trust that you'll be blessed. And stay safe. And we'll see you next week. Same channel, same time. God bless you.